nail, okay? It means that I know where to start my ombre with every nail. It's a very buttery powder, you see it just stays. Um, you think this is dry, but it's not. See, it's still very buttery. I'm gonna give it a little more time before I start moving it. So I'm just gonna leave it there. Just make sure it's not overflowing over the sides. It's really what I really care about, really. Then as the powder gets to like a medium system, I'm gonna slowly move it down. Just like that. And you see how this is from my stiletto tip? My stiletto tip is, I wanna make it more square. So I'm gonna let it dry a little bit more so I can mold it out, you see that? I'm gonna be able to mold it out. So it won't have that sharp tip anymore, but a nice coffin, you see that? You can't do this when the powder is wet because the powder will conform. But the powder is a little bit dry, I can actually mold it lightly, ever so lightly. See that? Now I have a nice square coffin instead of having a little sharp tip. And that's where I see a lot of people that are using stiletto tips. They, when they clip the, the tip, they don't uh, mold the, sculpt the powder to make it more coffin. And they, they keep it the same way. So then that's why you lose the shape. Let's move on to the pink. See these powders, even though they're pigmented, they're, they won't technically um marble that's the one thing i like about this new wave gel powder you guys can purchase it in the link below and i have a promo code with them save you some money this is such a nice pink look at this pink it's like a pastel but it's a light pink it's hard a lot of times we get light pinks we don't get the pastel look this gives it so it has coverage you can honestly use this pink also for a cover powder, um, for ombres. Slowly move it like I always do. See, you don't have to brush it. This powder gives you a lot of time to work with it. Um, I'm using my monomer, medium setting monomer, which is probably, uh, I'm gonna assume out of stock by now again, but um, it gives me a lot of time. I'm not too runny either. A lot of times monomer that's a runny it makes it hard to work with but as you can see i'm sculpting the edge again to make sure i have a nice coffin edge and not uh, more of a ballerina and i'm gonna shape my nails while i'm doing this give me the shape i need okay let's move to the this green here oh my god look at this mint oh. i'm a sucker for mint colors guys are they having a special for july 4th i don't really think you need a special they're affordable i mean for two ounces of powder you can get them for like 10 13 bucks 14 bucks um you don't really need a sale with this company truly look at this mint color. I love it. So I'll give it some time to mold it out. And we're going to do all the base color first before we do the ombre because I want to be able to make sure that my powder is consistent and see where I'm placing all the beads same spot all around right I think the next color I'm gonna do is probably gonna be that blue it looks so pretty Very nice blue. You see that? It's not gonna run. That's the one thing about this, it's still wet, but it's not gonna run. 
Ah, oh, bây giờ để. Yeah, see where I'm gonna sculpt it in. Compliment these ombre it would probably be a nice nude, a nudie pink. I'm gonna test a few. Right. Let's see this peach. I always end with a peach. Love peach. Right. Place the bead. When I want to move it, I'll move it. See that? I don't want to drag when it's too wet because I want it to be nice and even consistency. When I do light touches, I want to be able to move the powder down the nail. One thickness, okay? One amount of thickness, you see that? It's very important because a lot of times you guys are just dragging this powder through when it's still wet and it's like thin here, uh, thick there. You have an inconsistency in your nail and you, you don't want that, you want nice structure. shape now this is where the shaping comes in for a lot of you guys have issues with shaping I'm shaping my nail I don't use the hand file that much I have this nude here I'm gonna try it see if I like it if not I'm gonna use my own nah I'm gonna use my own I have one that I've mixed the other day you guys probably seen me use it Perfect little new tan that goes throughout everything here. Ah, my mind. Now I'll do the ombre portion. A nice fleshy nude. This is very sheer, so I gotta be very careful that it covers. Ooh, let me see if I can build a little bit more structure on here and it'll cover. So I made this nude to be very fleshy, see? It's very sheer. So I think maybe another coat on the apex area will cover it up. Yeah, I think we're fine. I think we're good. It's like a, it's, I'm glad I didn't use a lot of neon colors. That would be horrendous if I use neon colors. Because the neon would be very strong in the base. These are a little more pastel colors, so they're a little bit more forgiving when you're using covering a part like this. Wow, look at that, guys. That's nice. I didn't even zoom up for you guys. Whew. People will probably pay good money for this nude I mixed. <laughs> and this is probably going to match in with this pink a little bit, but it should be fine. We knew what we got ourselves into when we got this pink, right? What you can do about that, it still looks good together though. And for a lot of you guys to just learn how to ombre, I suggest natural colors like this so you don't run into issues with um, trying to work with the blend. This is very forgiving. You see how this nude is very nice and uh, natural? When you blend, it's very forgiving compared to if you use a very, very dominant color to blend in, it won't be as forgiving as this. And this, when it's wet, you kind of see, don't see the blend, but once it's dry and you put a matte on it or a shiny, it'll show through. So, you just gotta wait for that. It's 
It's one of those things about using pastel pinks and then nudes. Like I said, any, any cover of powder I use is gonna have this effect here. But for these ones, you better see it more evident. I'll cover the cuticle area first. This mint is so pretty, isn't it? I love mint greens. That's so pretty. Oh my god. This gives me like a refreshing vibe. This ombre. I love doing this this ombre. Spring, summer, any event matches any outfit. Important to get that blend in the same spot each nail. There's a position there. All right, I gotta put clear on this later to cap it also. This blue is important right here. I like this blue because it's almost like an aqua. Get that cute little flush. Once I start the blend, I never stop because the powder is going to consistently dry. So if I stop the blend, it's going to stop it. But you can always go back through and if you see any harsh lines where your blends are, you can just go and use the brush. A lot of people that do ombres, they forget the fact that they have to use the whole brush in this. I have a little bit of blue there. Simply just go bring some nude over there. It's fine. Remember, I'm gonna cap all this later, so I don't have to worry about it. As long as I get my blend perfect the way I want it. Damn, this would actually look really nice and matted. Actually, I might even mat this set. I can't resist the ombre when it's ombre when the top coat. Never mind. I'm not gonna. I'm gonna have to do shiny. Make sure we get the cuticle area nice and flush. And I'm kind of like building apex right here just on where you know it's gonna be the most harsh because this is a very light nude so my apex area is gonna be where the bulk of my nude is it's gonna cover most of that harshness see that so I utilize my first bead just to build my blend my second bead is to create any structure See now when I zoom in you can't even see it can you that's beautifully executed. And there you guys go. One hand down. And we go through, we repeat the same thing over. And with sets like this, it's very, very easy to do. Um, not hard. As you can see, I position my powder at the same spot every time because I know where my ombre is going to start. And that means that all my ombre is going to be consistent. You know, it's going to all have the same blend. I just really, right there, Ruby, I just answered your question right there. Consistency means placing your beads, knowing what, how much you're going to drag down. 
and be consistent means you gotta practice. I know exactly where I put the bead every time, every nail, so every nail is gonna have the same amount of drag because I start my ombre at the same spot, I drag at the same spot, right? So a lot of you guys just think that you're just gonna put this up, whatever, whatever, it's fine because you gotta put it blend, no. You have to gauge it, measure it out, okay? Ombre is a very simple technique, but it's about precision. That's the one thing that's hard about it, is that you have to be precise. I mean, you can't, and everybody can do ombre, okay? If you attempt to do an ombre, it doesn't matter how good or bad it is, it's still an ombre. Anytime you can attempt to blend anything, it's an ombre. It's when you want to be more precise, you want to be the next level of ombre, then that changes things. Okay? Anybody can do an ombre, but st to stand out between you and everybody else, it, it has, takes a little bit of um, finessing. Okay? An ombre is actually my specialty, so I... I specialize in it, so um, I, I know all these wave gel colors are amazing. You can't really go wrong with these wave gel colors. Look at no marbling. Easy to work with. It dries. A lot of times, colors like this, you worry that it doesn't dry, right? These colors actually dry. Brush size, I'm using in my size 14 right now. Hey, Precious, how are you? Yeah, you can get these colors right now on wavegelshop.com. They just reformulated every color. So all the colors right now are the same consistency as how I'm using right here. I'm using my medium setting monomer for my own my own monomer, which is, works really, really well. It's the middle one, green. Oh, God, this green's so pretty. Look at the depth in color, guys. No marbling whatsoever. You see that? Usually colors, when they mix... Oh, this mint is so pretty. I need to do a whole full set with this mint. Look at this, look at this mint. I, I, have, I, have to, I have to do a shout-out for this, this. This is 138. It's called green tea smoothie. Hell yeah. I can see it. Green tea smoothie. Y'all need to get this mint. Because this is that mint that you guys see people post. Hey, what color is this? You guys don't even know what color this is? This is literally that. This is that, that, that mint. Look at it. Not even one marbling. It doesn't marble. There's no inconsistency in the color. It's just nice and minty. for that blue same with this blue I really like this blue it's like a cerulean blue oops had a piece of dust stuck in there see that no marbling and usually this time you see like a separation between powder and acrylic but not here which is good see that I just leave it there move when I want to move it Arguably one of the most buttery powder I've seen. I should have had a hand in reformulating this powder, so I'm kind of pretty proud of it, guys. And all these colors come with matching gel colors. You guys can buy, probably buy the trio. You have the matching gel colors to come with this too on the website with gel you definitely got to get that green tea smoothie though that'd be the color when well, i'm gonna make sure that this portion is smooth the surface area has to be smooth because when you blending if this is not smooth it's going to take on whatever you're going to do later on okay that's why it's so important with ombre that the first bead position in the same spot every time. See that? Every time I put a bead, I gotta put it right there. When I wanna move it, 
I'll move it. And don't let me know if it's too runny or not. So I'm gonna just slowly move it down. See, my brush lightly. This gives me the ability, I'm brushing from the side in. Gives me, give me that curvature and also, I didn't have to pat it down or anything like that. I just didn't use my brush. The brush is used for brushing. A lot of you guys are just tapping, tapping. Now just brush it down, see? When the brush caresses the powder, it gives it a nice curvature, structure-wise, okay? And you can nicely shape the nail. A nice coffin right there. Okay. So, all the nails on. We're just gonna do the ombre again. So my first bead, I'm just gonna worry about my blend. Getting that cuticle up and blend. So my second bead, what I do? Yeah, see, I'll show you guys exactly what I'm talking about. You see how you can see a little bit through the uh, the purple? So my second bead, I'm gonna remedy that. I already got my blend. I know where my blend is starts and begins. My second bead, I'm gonna place it with the apex areas, which is where I place my big blend, my my um my purple earlier, my base color. That it gives it. The apex but also there'll be more nude powder there to cover up for a lot of you guys that run the issue of the base color coming through you definitely want to pat down this color the base color where that area is very really thin so that you can have more Let's see this this right here when you first did your application you can pat this down as thin as possible you don't need this to be thick that's where your arm your blend is gonna be so you don't want to have that thick because then you, the more of a, this secondary color you put there, you know, the more you'll be able to cover it up. See how the, how the bulk of the powder, where the thickest part of it is, the umbra, the, the, the uh, apex, it's where I place my base color strategically, right? I didn't place it too high, I didn't place it too low. I place it where I know that the bulk of it, of my, my nail is gonna need to be covered. So it's like two birds, one stone. One, I have to build apex anyways, structure. Two, I'm able to cover up any harshness from my ombre. That's why I do my ombre the way I do it. I strategically do it so that I'm able to get the perfect blend and also for a lot of times you guys use like black and white or something like that, you'll be able to cover it up. Uh, you'll be able to use the bulk of the powder where it needs to be anyway. But I see a lot of people try to cover up the powder. See how, let me show you the side. You see how thin it is right here? Right here? It's very thin. I don't need it to be too thick. It's thin for a reason, because when I do this, I know that this will be able to, no matter how sheer this is, it'll still be able to cover it up, as long as it's not neon. If this was a neon green, yes, no way this color is covering it up. But this is a nice minty green, smoothie green. So yes, this light nude will be able to cover it up. I don't have to use too dark of a nude. I didn't want to use a dark nude for this set anyways, because it's, it's more of like a refreshing ombre. I want to call it like a spring ombre. So I don't want to use any really, really harsh colors or harsh cover powders. See, now my blend is the way I want it. Next thing I'm gonna do is put a little bit more powder where my apex area is. And that's gonna be able to cover up that most, the rest of that darkness. I'm not gonna blend this into, I'm gonna blend this lightly into the, cause I don't want, I already did my blend. So the last thing I wanna do is drag more powder. So I'm gonna leave majority of the powder there to cover up that green line. I love 
like light nude ombres like this. It's so clean. It has a refreshing look to it. When this top coat hits, I tell you, when it hits, it hits. And ombre definitely is a, a set that you do with precision. You can't rush this. If you're trying to rush through an ombre, it's definitely not going to be what you want to do. One, you have to be precise. Two, it's powder, so you know, you're committed once, once you start working. If you're in a rush, in a hurry to finish it up, it's not going to go your way. You got to take your time, follow the steps and your techniques to the T. Because really, it's just a repetition of the same thing over and over again. That's why when in my classes, I teach the student to follow the steps and the techniques. Because at the end of the day, that's what's really going to be able to get you through the, the, the design. You know, you got to go back to the basics. It's not that hard as long as you have all the right techniques, the simple techniques of blending. I teach ombre techniques during my two beating. I kind of get, I get, I kind of get into their system early. And then later when they learn ombre, they're like, "Oh my gosh, I've been doing this for the last hour, two hours, they're doing two beads." Yes, you have. You just didn't notice it, right? Now they pretty much incorporate the same technique, just differently. Apply it to a different, you know, kind of different field, kind of. Just so still see a little bit of blue here, and I definitely have enough leeway. So, let's say for example, I did the, the blue down here really, really thick. What's gonna happen? It's gonna be hard for me to cover it up for one, and the more I try to cover it up, what happens? The thicker my nail gets. No, thank you. And once you get the hang of ombre, you'll be able to do big bees like this and be able to blend and worry about your cuticles and also your um, apex at the same time. Until then, break it down to a few steps. You don't have to rush. You don't have to do all in, one, in two bees like I did it. You can do it in three beads, four beads. As long as you get the final results, that's all you need, right? All that matters. Beautiful. Wow. That's, this is a pretty... pretty Man, this, this dude is so goddamn pretty. I have tears. I just don't, I don't remember how I even mixed this nude. I was just t testing this and that. A little bit this, a little bit of that. Uh, I really gotta get this formula down and start mixing my own nudes. Okay, once again, that's Wave Gel Powder. We got that Peachy 98 called Infinite Scarf. Of course, we have my nude that I mix. We have this purple, which I, think I really like this purple too. 155, Maiden of Grape. Maiden of Grape. Huh. This blue. Cerulean blue, I knew it was Cerulean blue. This mint, which we all know. Green tea smoothie, you gotta get that. And a light pink, a light pastel pink. Lost in translation. Cute names. Names remind me of OPI gel polish. Of course, I gotta clean my brush. Oh! <laughs> I forgot. We gotta cap it. <laughs> almost, almost thought I was finished, but I had to put the width anyways. So now we're gonna cap. I'm only gonna cap where my ombre is. See that? Remember, I already built thickness with my nude. I don't need to have more thickness. But I'll cap with my ombre is and I'll drag it through to make sure that later on when I do file and drill, I'm not gonna ruin my ombre. And if you have like maybe you want if you're missing structure, check your side view. This is the time to go through and you know add that clear to where you need it, where you're missing, where you feel like you're missing the structure. Doesn't mean you have to do the whole nail clear. I see a lot of people take a big bead and put it on there. No, you don't, you just need enough. You don't want to add more thickness, then you gotta drill and file more, okay? Don't add too much work for yourself. See, look at that. And this, this, this process is very simple, really. Just a small bead every time. Place it where the ombre is, and where is that? The apex area, how convenient. Hey, Edgar, how are you? 
Have you been busy since you came back from Denver class? Oh, Denver was so nice. Can't wait to go to Vegas during July 4th. And also, for a lot of you guys, San Jose. If you guys are in the San Jose area, California area, or want to travel to our last West Coast class before we come back to East Coast for master classes, we welcome you. Yeah, see that? Very simple. Very simple capping method. I know you can do the whole nail, but I, there's no point of doing the whole nail, y'all. We don't want any more thicker than it already is. Oh, Dior. Thank you. Hey, Garrett, how are you? When are you leaving for your trip, Garrett? Or are you already there? Yeah, see that? I'm still shaping my nail as I'm applying this clip. I'm never gonna stop shaping the nail. Anytime I have this acrylic brush and I'm working with acrylic, I will be shaping with this brush. And I'll show you guys that right really. A lot of you guys are struggling with shaping. This is why you need to shape with your brush, y'all. Look how perfect that shape is. Super excited for Vegas class. Oh, hey, Passion Day. <laughs> my newly licensed nail tech. Okay, I'm so proud of you. Jeez, Passionate, you've been following me for so long. Finally, I'm coming to Vegas. I still remember you got, you got asking about Vegas class back in the day. I think when you started following me is when you all, you're all about going to nail school. Wow. I love it when students, when my followers and students and, you know, supporters, they go to nail school and they let me know. I'm attending nail school. And then all of a sudden, like months later, I'm graduating. I'm like, I'm so happy for you. Really, it's an accomplishment. I'm, I'm actually truly happy when I ever I see anybody says I'm getting my license. Cause I know that that's one more step towards your career as a professional nail tech, open up doors, you'd be a salon owner, all that stuff, working in a salon. I have a lot of things coming in the future to get you guys salon ready. I call it Nail Dad Salon Ready course. I've been working with, I'm working with some nail schools incorporated into their curriculum. How about that? How about that? for? leaving a mark behind in the nail industry. Hey, Nail Dad, what's the name of the brush? I'm a nails over it. This is uh, my Nail Dad Studios brush. I crimp it myself. That's why you see that it's like that. I trained it. So um, I have it. It's on my website. You can go to naildadshop.com in the pin link below. I'm using a size 14. Pick a size that is best suited for you. It's a really good brush. I mean, I've get really good feedback from it. <laughs> I've had people use this for years. My very first brush I sold, it had the my other Instagram name on it. There are actually people that still have it till this day, over a year, guys. Amazing. They say, I still use it. I'm like, damn. I had one too, but I lost it during a class. I'm kind of upset. I've been trying to bribe them, these are people that still have my original ones to give it to me and trade in for a new one. They're like, nah, we ain't trading in for nothing. Cause they got the original 50. I call it the original Founders Edition. Look at that ombre guys. That's so pretty. If you offer a whole nail tech class, I can't, I'd have to have a nail school like that. But I've been working with a lot of nail, nail academies and we believe that um, having a salon ready course after you graduate is a very good. It's so pretty much, uh, I'm a, a nail tech salon owner, brand owner. I know a lot of like, you know, ins and out business wise. I'm able to teach them, uh, you know, nails, of course, like to, pretty much just trying to catch them up to the industry right now, all the designs and trending techniques, and also give them a short, brief lesson about how to, you know, work in a salon and what to expect. And also, you know, how to be your own salon in the future be your own boss and how to run your business and this and that and that's 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 why i call it my salon ready course so it's kind of like a after you graduate you got your license boom you're going to take a three-day course with nail dad which is included into your tuition when you first got your um when you first sign up for tuition 
and it'll be a group of the graduating students. That's where I'll be go, able to go through that with them. Kind of almost like a mentorship thing. And I think we, we believe it's going to be a good idea because some of the nail schools, they don't have enough time or resources to teach all that. But to include and bring me into it, the fold, I'm very honored. It's in the works. We'll see what comes of it. But if, if I'm successful in this and other and start the trend and other nail techs, uh, other educators are do this too. All it benefits is, you know, it benefits the, the students, the, uh, the ones getting their license, you know? You, you can leave, get your license, come out, and you'll be ready to hop in a salon or even start your own business or something like that. And I feel like everybody should have that chance just spending thousands of dollars on your nail license. A lot of people get your license and they come out and they feel lost. They don't know what, they don't know what the next step in their goal is. They don't even, they're not even ready to even work in a salon, to be honest with you. And that's sad. So we've got to change that. We change it through the education system. And I, I, I tell everybody this, like, I'm going to leave a mark behind in this industry in some form, one way or another. And if, if this is something I can do and it's going to start a trend and it's going to be a big thing, it's just going to make the industry stronger. Now techs will come out. And it make our it make our industry more prestigious, guys. We'll be able to catch up to the makeup artists, the hairstylists, you know, all that stuff. You know, I know we complain a lot that we get overshadowed, but I'm done complaining. Time to do something. You know, it starts with us. You know, I can mean, sit here and feel bad for ourselves and complain all we want, but we want to do something. You know, if we want to be noticed, like you know, makeup artists and hairstylists, then we're gonna make ourselves be noticed. And the only way we can do that is start with the education the quality of our, our, our nail tech and bring our community together. I feel like the community is too much in competition with each other. You don't see hairstylists out there fighting over how many heads of hair they, they, they in, in their local area. There's so many, you know, all the, the hairstylists that are like, you know, they know what they're doing. They all, they're always booked and it should be the same with nails. There's no reason why you're fighting over clients. There's billions of clients. There's clients not getting service because they're, because the quality of nail techs needs to be increased yes i'm gonna say that i want the quality of the nail tech in this industry as a whole to be increased and to me to do that we have to start with the education level what they learn the content we produce that's why i always i always save my content on the internet for anybody to use to better themselves this is free for you guys a lot of you guys are always here supporting, sharing all that stuff. That's good because that helps other people find it. You never know. Someone is on the brink of giving up and all of a sudden they find some kind of content that helps them through that slump and they get second breath of air, second wind. And there we go. We finish this last finger and we're going to go through shaping and we're going to do a little bit of Drilling, hand filing, cuticle work, and then we're gonna put the top coat on and everybody's gonna go, ooh, ah, I love it. It's so pretty. You see how I'm blending forward on this bead? I'm not gonna leave the bead as it is. I have to blend it forward. A lot of you guys put it on the bead and you guys just leave it there. No, don't do that, please. It has to slope forward and backwards, like forward up here, okay? Slope it. Slope it. Use the whole brush brush through. I just want a nice thin layer of clear. To cap my ombre. And there we go. Now I can clean my brush. So here's a bit of a gem. You have to get your brush. You go, you take your hands and you feather through. You see that? How it's when you feel it, you feel it. Chunks, it's okay. It's still soft. It's just acrylic residue. See that? It's just acrylic residue, okay? You can get it out that way. Don't leave it there because it'll, it'll, it'll harden up, okay? One more time. Ah, see that? How it just feathers through nice and easy? That's when you know there's no more acrylic stuck in there and that the brush won't dry up on you. See that? You can feel it with your fingers. Sometimes you can't see it. Sometimes you look at the outside, oh, this looks clean, right? And all of a sudden inside there's a piece of acrylic that you maybe not notice. And then later on you do a set and it's hardened up and then you're like, God dang it. So all my brushes are crimped and I train them so that 
it stays like this and over time. And that's that. That's very important. After every set you do, you should be doing that. I don't care if you have a set right after, you need to do it. Every set you do, keep your, keep your brush clean. That's why they last a year. Yes, I sell brushes. I don't mind if you use my brush for a year. I, I'm always out of stock. I always have people buy it, but I want you guys to be able to take care of your investment. So when I, you know, I said earlier, I said I don't have to really do a lot of shaping because I don't, remember? Because I shape with my what? My acrylic brush. So I'm just gonna go through and I'm gonna just crisp it up. Because the one thing about this thing, this hand filer, I want you guys to understand, this hand filer could be your best friend, also your worst enemy. Because the more you do this, the worse it gets. As in, you're taking away the shape. You're taking away, taking away, taking away. So you gotta be careful. A lot of people get really, really, really like trigger finger and they just sit there and just all day long. No. You need to just do it slightly, just enough, and move on. If you're sitting here for 10 minutes on one finger doing this, your shape's either changed or has moved to the left, to the right. You've, it's easy to remove acrylic, harder to add on, okay? Remember that. And I'm just, just crisping up my shape. The shape should be already there, see? A nice, ooh, look at that blend, baby. I told you once it dries, you're gonna see that show through a little bit better, right? Yes, yeah, one, two, and I switch sides every time. I don't stay on one side too long because I don't want it. I want it to be equal. Mm -hmm. Underneath. See that? I'm never gonna stay on one side for too long. Equal amount of strokes on each side so that I don't run the issue of over filing. Yes, you can file over file. gotta enjoy what you do because once you enjoy what you do and you execute the technique and it just looks so well and you're just so proud of yourself you're like dang it all that hard work time i put in my profession at the end of the day this profession is just something you'd be proud of you know hey you know i'm gonna be honest back when i first started doing nails 10 years ago 15 years ago being a nail tech was not really a prestigious thing people would think oh they scrub feet they do pedicure manicures Mom and pop shops. I don't want to tell my college friends I did nails. Like, you do nails? My mom, my sister gets their nails done. No. I was not embarrassed, but I wasn't going to announce it publicly. But now it's such a different era. Now, being a nail tech is like an artist. You can be an artist. You can be an educator, brand owner. It's so much more prestige. You guys are in the golden era of nails right now. So, if anyone you guys are starting to do nails right now, this is the perfect time to do it. There's so many resources, classes, so many products coming out. You know, there's so much coming into this industry that's gonna be so amazing. Back then, we didn't even have all this. I tell you, sometimes the right shaping can bring tears, tears to your eyes, I'm telling you. It can bring tears. When it just hits just right. If you love what you do, you know work day in your life, yeah.
Hey Tracy, how are you? It's very quick. Yeah, see how I, it's just a repetition of the same technique over and over whenever I shape. People are like, oh, I love your shaping. I'm not doing that, nothing special. I, t I guarantee you that right now. Really nothing special going on here. Basic shaping technique. I'm very dependent on my application though. If my application is not on point that day, my shaping will suffer. So let's say if I have an off day and I, my application is kind of eh, then you're gonna see it reflected into my shape. Cause I really don't give my uh, hand filer the chance to really, maybe I should. I mean, I guess if you have an off day with application then your hand filer needs to make up for it. But I kind of don't give myself, put myself in that situation often. I always focus on my application. Remember I have, I have a good day or a bad day. That's the one thing I have to keep really good. Fifteen minutes is probably the max amount of time you should be shaping nails. I think. I think anytime you go over that, that's for the whole hand. I think anytime you're sitting there, you're shaping, shaping, shaping too much. It's too late. The shape is gone. So, catch yourself when you're shaping. Okay. If you're sitting here for like ten minutes, you're like, oh shoot, I need to stop. I've actually done it with, with, with my staff. My staff. One day I was sitting in my studio back here and I'm looking at my staff working and she's sitting there shaping the same finger for like 10 minutes. I'm like, there's no way she's anything left to shape. So I just text her, hey, move on to the next finger. You're shaping, you're over filing. I, can, I remember sending the text and I look out there and I saw her look at her phone and she just completely snapped into action. Like, oh my God, he's right. Cause sometimes you don't notice it when you're sitting there trying to make things perfect when you realize that you're just making it worse and worse and worse. It's like digging yourself a hole that you can't get out of. You just gotta stop. So I would I would like to say, I don't think nail techs today have issues with shaping per se. I think they have issues with over, over filing as in they shaping too much. So they can't get the shape they originally wanted because they, they're overdoing it too much. If that makes any sense. Of course it makes sense. Now dad. Right? Now dad always makes sense, right? Not always. So it's perspective when you're shaping. Are you doing enough or are you doing too much? Oh my god. Guys. <gasps> guys. Look at that. How pretty that looks, guys. The Christmas, the Christmas, the Christmas, the Christmas. So crispy, I'd probably make Popeyes proud. This nail is so smooth. I'm not gonna mess with it. I'm just gonna do my cuticle work, clean up underneath and call it a Zay. So I'm gonna use my five in one bit here. This is a very unique bit. It's a Diamond cross cut five and one a sharp fit. You can get this in a standard um, You can get it in a safety if you need it But this is what the magic happens when I do my cuticle work Get my nice flush cuticles Usually I'll do a little bit of hand filing, but this time I don't really need to because it's just so smooth already. Because it was, I meant, my application was already smooth earlier. When I did that, when I when I capped it with clear, it just smoothed everything out so well because of my ability to control the powder. 
this gives me the ability to flush down this cuticle area. Make sure that I don't have any lifts for a lot of guys have lifting problems. clean cuticles nice and smooth surface this is very important i know a lot of you guys are scared to do this but you have to learn how to do this if those guys have lifting issues this is where it is even pop off issues why is the nail popping off probably because after a couple of days it started to lift and that's why it's popping off okay clean cuticles is very important just sealing it in okay and i move the client's hands the way i need it to move i'm not moving myself you see how my drill is not moving it's the client's fingers that's moving I have more control over it. It's a sharp tool. The client should know to be relaxed while I'm working. Because what happens if you're not relaxed? I'm bon quickly then. If you guys don't know what bon quickly is, I will cut them. Remember, we have that clear that's protecting our ombre, but that does not mean we can't drill it off. So be careful how much you're drilling off. If you did a very thin coat, you definitely got to be careful not to do it too, too, too heavy handed when it comes to this part. Worst thing you can do is drill off your perfect, lovely ombre because you're a little bit heavy handed in. Um, this drill bit, the way it's, the way the tooth is cut, it makes it so easy. Circular motion, you'll be able to smooth out the nail so smooth. Look at this. Mm -hmm. They won't leave behind any scratch marks because it's spinning in a spiral motion that's also drilling in a circular motion so the friction is directly that's how I want it Ooh. I love the feeling of cuticle work though. You got that nice crispy cuticle work. Ooh.
You know what I know? I know that the nail's not gonna lift when that happens. And that's the most important thing. Doing a good set of nails is one thing, but making sure that it doesn't lift and it stays on. That's another. I can really depend on this alone. Sometimes I don't even do primer and all that stuff. There are times when I like forget or I even did a, a test where I didn't use any primer. I just prepped and did good cuticle work. And that's actually on her hand. It lasts for a whole, whole month. Do you remember that white set that I did for you with the lines that kind of like look like Tron and mm -hmm. then the orange and the pigment? And neon, yeah. yeah, that set, I didn't even use um, primer or anything. And you came back a month later and it was like, on tight. I actually used you as a guinea pig. I didn't even tell you, did I? No. Why you think? Last the yeah. Because I've been trying to prove a point that you don't really need all this extra stuff. It just helps. That a nail texture should be able to do everything, as in technique-wise, to keep the nails on. And then I was like, you know what? I'm not gonna sit here and talk out of my ass. I'm gonna prove it. So during that live, I didn't, I didn't use any of it, and I, when you came back, I was like, yeah. That was longer than a month. Huh? That was longer than yeah, a month. Yeah, it was longer than a month. It makes you want to do a set? Go do one, Sandy. I know. I actually watch other people do nails sometimes. And I'm like, wow, this is this satisfying. Not how you guys feel when you guys are sitting here watching me drill. There is there is like an ASMR aesthetic to this. I know. I think my favorite part is probably putting on the top coat, to be honest with you. And right now, I'm just doing, you see how I'm moving her hand the way I, whatever angle I need. This finger is easier for me to move than my whole body trying to... I see a lot of nail techs trying to position themselves to be comfortable. No. You got a power tool in your hand with a sharp tool. You need to be comfortable, not the client, okay? If the client has to twist their finger like a pretzel for just a quick, you know, 10 seconds so you get around that corner so that you don't get, you're not getting any lifts, twist that damn finger, okay? You're the one that needs to be comfortable. A lot of you guys, oh, I'm gonna make sure they're comfortable. I'm like, no, 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 no. You can be comfortable, and uh, you, you can be drawing blood, for sure. You love dusty nails? What's up, Sheila? Yeah, dusty nails. I used to actually have, a, I had a collection of dusty photos. I think I'm gonna drop a bunch of them again. Back in the day, I used to love taking pictures of dust, dusty nails before they washed their hands. And I have like a collection of it. It might be still on my Instagram called Dusties. Something about unfinished dusty nails is really appealing to me. I don't know. I prefer I, I prefer that look over whenever I take pictures over pictures of finished look. It's just something about unfinished dusty nails. It just has this like appeal. You can see I'm moving her finger. Because when you move her finger, you know exactly how where to put it, where your drill is. A lot of control there, okay? For a lot of you guys that don't have a good foundation, you're not holding the client's nails down strong enough, that's why you run into issues of actually cutting them. If you're just trying to drill like, you know, without having any foundation, let's say my hand is free like this. See, my hand's always gonna have my pinky or my, 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 my forefinger as the support system. See this pinky? It's gonna be support, like a platform over her, over where I'm, my work area. I can't be like this. It's not stable. I know it feels weird at first, but you're getting used to it. Hold from the bottom, don't hold from the top. Cause you're pushing downward. You wanna make sure you hold from the bottom so that you have support. There are some people that will tell you to hold from the top like this which I think it's ridiculous because you're putting pressure downward and you have the whole hand covering your face so you can't see what you're doing. It just makes no sense to me.
Where's everybody watching from? I want, I want some, I want some roll calls. I miss doing this when I used to do roll calls. So I know what state I'm reaching. That's it. No, I'm gonna do it live. I'm like roll call, everybody. Where you come? Where you at? A lot of times, a lot of you guys are probably like in your, like the same neighborhood or same city. You don't even know it. And then you are asking me, oh, I don't have any nail tech friends. Well, you can meet them here and it's live. Everybody here has the same passion, doing nails. You'd be surprised how many people have met each other off my lives and still are friends on Facebook and taking classes together. That's the one thing I used to hear back when I first started doing lives. People used to post, I don't have anybody I, I can share this with. You know, my friends and family don't support my friends and family don't support me. They don't understand my craft. I'm like, damn. We need more support system in our industry, guys. I'm just honest here. Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Holland, Europe. Okay, Ruby. Oh, this from Holland. Wow. What time is it over there? I use, Oh, actually, I have a big UK and uh, European uh, following. Um, Netherlands was huge back then. You have a huge Netherlands following. I still do. Trinidad for sure. Scotland, there you go. Scotland, UK area. Um, Guana, Guiana, Guana, and also um, Trinidad is big. Bahamas, you guys are big too. All you island girls, you love now so much. I actually had a girl from uh, Bahamas. A student from Bahamas came to my New York class. It was so awesome. West Memphis, Arkansas. Mm. Newcastle. St. Paula, California. How far is that from San Jose? I felt like St. Paula, California it sounds like a southern Southern California. Johannesburg, South Africa. Nice. Honestly, a lot of people message me. I wish you were here in in South Africa. I might have to try to set up something international once everything opens up. I feel like my first international class is probably going to be in UK, UK or Canada. We we'll probably head to Canada first. It's our neighbor right here. Once they open up the borders and everything's more chill. That, just go around the cave area just like that. Lean her thumb so I can get. See that? I need to be able to see the sides. I'm gonna just twist her finger to the side like that. And look at that structure, guys. Hello. I'm gonna be honest with you. With proper structure like this. The nail, it won't break. It won't. I guarantee you. Money back guarantee. Unless you're breaking this nail, it will not break. This is very important. Proper apex, proper structure, proper thickness. Okay, guys, we're gonna go through. We're gonna do one last check, one last call on the shape. In case we drill too much, found too much, one last call. Just very lightly go through. Last call for alcohol. So you don't regret it later. Okay, do this now. Don't do it when you put the top coat on and try to do it. You're gonna break the seal on the top coat. Or in your gel polish. Check this direction. Make sure everything's good. Fantastic, beautiful. You never know. This can be increase your shaping by maybe three, four percent, but you spent four or five minutes doing it. It's worth it, I guarantee you. Any increase of shaping percentage 
it's worth the time spent. So we lose our shape through top coat gel polishes anyway, so we're gonna increase it as much as we can during this process. I'm just lightly going through, cleaning up any loose ends. Because you know, thickness change also affects shape. For a lot of you guys, you guys probably did your application. Oh wow, the shape is so nice. And then all of a sudden you're drilling down, drilling down, and the shape change. You're like, why? Yeah, thickness is a direct. Bye, you leave so early. Time what time is it? 6.40. Mm, and he's worried about your, your totals. You've been making less than all the other girls. What's going on? Because I've been working I mean, I've been working five days. Still, you should be pushing out your days for, in the 500 mark, at least. Book yourself accordingly. Time okay. yourself, okay? You're making A lot of girls been booking and not showing. Well, then start taking deposits, because... Your totals have been dropping, and I'm wondering why. But yeah. you gotta stay around the 500 mark, okay? okay? 400, 500 at least. All right, have a good night. Nice little buffaroni. I gotta always pay attention to my staff, especially my main girls, their income. And he dropped an income by a couple hundred dollars. I'm like, what? Why is it dropping? Sometimes they're just going too slow or their clients are not showing up. And I'm going to force. Deposits. Gotta take care of my girls, you know? My team. All right, wash your hands. And there you guys have it. Just a nice ombre using five colors. I think this is gonna come out really, really pretty when the taco hits. <sighs> a lot of my girls, they do only acrylic nails only and they let the pedicure manicure girls do the other stuff, so. When the acrylic client doesn't show up, they're losing hundreds of dollars, so. This nail bit is my five in one um, sharp. And they, they have that safety version. You see how the way the, teeth, the tooth is cut? Maybe I can, I I can zoom in there. It's a lot different from all the other five ones you guys have seen. You see how it's made? It's a little bit different, okay? I didn't want the same thing as everybody else. We're gonna go with glossy, not Madden. I just, I just, I have to see it. Oh, John, I know, I know you feel, I know that is like Celine. As if you're working on your stuff, Jamaica, Scotland, hey Sheila. Looks sculpted, I know. Watching, watching in Turkey Life Hotline. <laughs> Yo, turkey leg, I need to get one of those. <laughs> yeah, see? Wow. All right, let's go with the gloss, okay? This I'm using my top coat. Um, this is no cleanse, no wipe. It's money back guarantee. If you don't like it, just send it back. Pay for it to be sent back, and you'll get your money back. You just need one thin coat. Look at that shape.
my top coat is a medium consistency so it won't run into the corners and coagulate Just thin coat. A lot of you guys probably think, oh, more top coat, it'll be more shiny, it'll stay better. No. You want nice thin, just a nice thin coat like that. The thinner it is, the better, the faster it cures, the better it stays on, okay? You see it? This top coat is a medium, it's not runny. And I guess run into top coats that are very runny, so that when the moment you tilt the hand, it rolls into one corner and you have a big bubble. Yes, it's happened to me. I know. That's why when I made my top coat, I was like, listen, we ain't doing that game. So my top coat is medium, so it won't run. A nice thin layer is, has nowhere to run. It's only... You do very nice thin layers. The thinner it is, you won't have any issues with it separating. Yeah, see, so the thinner the top coat actually separates and actually creates like little crater sometimes. Not I. And whoop, that is. Let's take a second to appreciate the application. The structure of the nail consistently. Building structure. Also, the blend on one spot, same blend. And look at the shine, it's so shiny. 60 seconds, and that's it. Let's give it a little cue for oil. Give him a look. A look see. Oh, all right. See how the top coat doesn't the top coat doesn't run to the corners. It stays. Thank you guys. This is the last of the day. Possibly we'll see you guys for Q and A tonight in case I get any.